Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Farber. I'm a developer at Be Accessible here in Los Angeles. We help organizations build websites that satisfy accessibility laws and support the broadest circle of people, including those with disabilities. Technology is evolving. Accessibility laws are changing. Similar to how store locations must have a wheelchair ramp or a certain door width, websites today must follow particular design steps to support people that might not be able to view a screen or hold a mouse. Um, these users rely on assistive technologies, such as screen readers, which uh, organize and read aloud the information on a page. Um, a critical part of any website is forms. That is where we take uh, user input. Um, so I'm happy to announce today that uh, Be Accessible is releasing an open source guide um, on how to build accessible forms. Um, we've posted the code on our B, on the Be Accessible GitHub repo. So um, before I get into examples, just know um, this code is available for any designers and developers to use on their own sites. Um, Be Accessible is dedicated to making the internet more accessible to users, to people, and developers. All right, now let me take you and show you our, our guide to building accessible forms. Okay, here it is at beaccessible.github.io forms. Um, here we have, you know, a link to our Be Accessible website, to our LinkedIn, and this is to the code, to the actual code base. I'm gonna collapse this sidebar for now. These uh, forms that I'm about to uh, demonstrate for you um, provide a series of best practices for accessibility. The only way to really ensure that your website is accessible is through really a three-step process. That's automated auditing to find the location of you know, easily fixable errors such as missing alt text or color contrast issues, uh, manual testing to find the real barriers um, to accessibility on your website, and a real roadmap to recovery, and a usability lab. Um, that's where we bring, um, you have real users test out your site, particularly those with disabilities. Only by bringing in real users can you truly understand the extent of the issues on your website. Um, all right, now let's get into the forms here. Okay, so the first step to um, accessibility is intuitive navigation. A user is able to go through your site and know what to do each step of the way. Okay, so let's look at the first example here. A big way that we can help users is by providing clear instructions. Take a look at the do. Here we just provide the, um, the additional instruction about the enrollment ID, whereas for the don't, we force them to hover. Hover doesn't even work on mobile. We've created cross-browser issues. Also notice that the do form has a stronger call to action, yeah, than just the vague enter. Okay, now one thing that we emphasize is that um, accessibility is dynamic, not brittle. So we favor client-side validation over server-side we don't want to force users to have to wait for a page reload. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so look at the do form. We submit an empty form. Uh, it didn't actually submit it. Obviously, we know blank fields are invalid. We use JavaScript to prevent the uh, prevent this. Okay, and then also we are able to give them dynamic feedback. And that way we ensure better quality data in our own database. Now let's check out the don't form. Okay, so they just submitted. Hmm, did you notice that? The page had to reload. And we added these two form, these two vague error messages and we had to change our styling. All right, let's take a look. Now beyond smarter error handling that's dynamic, we can help progressively enhance. We can add functionality on top of the core HTML on the page using things like JavaScript. Let me show you. So here, a currency field, a very common thing on the internet. Here, I'm typing letters. It's not reading them. If I try to type more than three dec two decimals, it doesn't let me. If I type one, two, it makes it clear that it was for $12. Whereas, let's check out the don't form. We can type letters. And then if we leave the field, it doesn't change it. A dollar to a real dollar figure. Um, this can all be achieved again. 
through JavaScript and regex, the code is on our site. Um, the last thing I want to emphasize is that accessibility is not just about following the weak WCAG guidelines, the long set of uh, design guidelines that's kind of been the accepted standard for accessibility. It's about common sense. There's a wider range of user agents on your site. Um, when I say user agents, that means, you know, the combination of device, operating system, you know, location, internet, that is kind of inherent with every user. Um, so when you use a PDF, when you make them download an additional file, you're making all types of assumptions about their technology. Whenever it's permanent content, you should use HTML. Okay. And the last thing I want to show you is that even this site has an accessibility statement. Every website should have an accessibility statement, which is an acknowledgement of the site's accessibility and is a signal of empathy towards the topic. Um, and most importantly, it's a point of contact for users. It creates the feedback loop, which um, makes accessibility sustainable. We help every, Be Accessible helps every organization it works with produce an accessibility statement. Be Accessible is available for half-day and full-day accessibility trainings, as well as auditing and web development.